We are here, we are live from the Klein residence. I'm sitting on the couch. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on the link to this video. Um, and by the title of this video, I am just so glad that you clicked on the link because clearly there was a reason on why you wanted to watch this specific one. And so I actually don't know what I'm titling the video yet, but it's gonna be somewhere around the lines of like how to read your Bible or just how I read my Bible. And because I first wanna start out this video, um, why I wanted to make this and why I wanted to film this is because I get so many questions uh, from people in my college ministry, from people uh, that I know that I'm friends with in my small group, but also through Instagram DMs, just so lost and aimless, but very eager and wanting to read their Bible. They have no idea where to start. They have no idea what to do, um, but they so, so badly just want to hop in. They want to grow in their faith. They want to um, just grow in their relationship with the Lord. And I love when people ask me that question because I was literally the same way. And when I started to develop a personal relationship with Jesus, I would literally YouTube these questions all the time. I would literally YouTube because I had no idea where to start. How do you read your Bible? How to read your Bible? Like all these things. And I would, go I, I would Google it. I would YouTube it because I was like, I have no idea where to start. What are the Gospels? Like I was literally that aimless and I'm okay with admitting that because uh, I'm not gonna be over here saying yeah, I know everything and you should do exactly what I should do what I do and You need to follow my example and blah 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 Because when you pick up the Word of God and you pick up a Bible and you are really eager and you're wanting to grow in your faith This can seem very intimidating. It's filled with words. You have no idea where to start. Do I start in the front cover? Do I start in the middle of it? Do I just flip it open and see where it lands and then start there? It's very intimidating and sometimes we feel scared as Christians because we feel dumb um, to ask how do you read it and that that should never be a fear. That's not a dumb question. Um, a lot of people are thinking it. So actually if you ask, you're voicing the question that a lot of people are, are processing through their mind and they just don't want to ask it themselves. So I'm glad you're here. I want to walk, uh, walk through with you and just how I read my Bible, how I got started, why, why I read the Bible, why, um, how I got started reading the Bible every single day, um, how that habit started, why I wanted to and everything like that. And so, yeah, I'll, and I just, again, I want to preface, that's the right word. I want to preface in this video that I do not have a seminary degree. I do not have a degree in theology. I don't, I'm not a pastor or any, or any means like that. Um, but this is what I do in quiet time and I absolutely love it. It's actually what a mentor, um, a long time ago, I had a conversation with a mentor of mine, just how to read the Bible and they recommended this process to me and it's kind of just stuck. So um, I love it. It gives me routine, um, but it's also exciting. You get something, you can, you have the ability to uh, get something new from the word of God every single day just because it's your daily bread and he can speak to you differently through the power of the Holy Spirit um, every single day because God is that cool. So I'm going to hop into this and we will get started and just see where the Lord takes us. <laughs> I first want to start off with why I read the Bible. And there is one verse in um, 2 Timothy that I actually want to reference when I am going over this on why I read the Bible. And it's actually really funny because when Michael and I first met, he uh, had an internship throughout college where he actually went to Gulf Shores, Alabama, and he almost worked like a missionary in Gulf Shores, Alabama for like a summer. And he spent that summer and was very diligent and disciplined in uh, studying scripture, but also memorizing scripture. And so when we first met, one of my goals was to memorize scripture, like certain Bible verses that I just wanted to like have written on my heart and I wanted to be able to pull um, in times where I just needed that reminder for myself or myself or maybe even a reminder for a friend. 
and one of the goals that I had set was I want to memorize more scripture and he, like one of the first verses he he took the time it was like super sweet when we first met he got a bunch of index cards and he wrote different bible verses um on all these index cards and then had a little holder for it and put the index cards in the holder and gave it to me as a gift and he's like here's some bible verses that you we can start memorizing and I'll help you with it and so one of those he said this is the very first verse that we're going to memorize and it was from sorry someone text it's from second timothy 3 verse 16 i can't speak and i have the nlt version of the bible uh that's just a version of the bible you know the versions can be updated as time goes on and so i don't want you to get confused by that there's niv nlt tbt um new king's james version if you're reading that power to you um, maybe one day I will too. It's just really hard to decipher and depict um, ESV. So just different versions of the Bible. That's what that means. It's usually on the side of the Bible on uh, the binding. And so mine says NLT right there. Um, so when you're in the bookstore and you're looking for a Bible and maybe you've never even got one and you're wanting to purchase a Bible, my first ever one that I bought for myself in college, or actually my best friend gifted it to me and I read it for, I still reference that Bible. It's a study Bible. It's the Quest study Bible and it's NIV. So new international version. And recently, a couple years ago during a internship that I had at a church, I actually bought this Bible from Amazon. This was $9 NLT and I just wanted the NLT version. So um, yeah, that's kind of what that is. I would totally rec recommend NIV or NLT if you're first starting to read your Bible. And I'd also recommend getting a study Bible that has a little commentary on the side just so that you can reference it. If a verse is very confusing for you, you can go to that commentary and be able to read through it and understand the setting or understand what's going on or even the the people that you're reading about, the time, everything like that. And so those things are really helpful, even definitions of words that are confusing. Um, so my Quest Study Bible was something that was so, so valuable to me and so, so helpful as I was learning and growing in my faith. Um, but anyway, I want to go to 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. That is over, I went right over it. That is the verse that we are going to go over and it's the first verse that Michael had me memorize. And that's all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It, cor it corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. And so I'm gonna go into verse 17 actually as well. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. So all scripture is inspired by God. That's so key. That is why I read the word because this is the truth. This is the only truth and all of it is breathed out by God. So the people that wrote the different books of the Bible, it was all inspired by what God was walking them through their lives, um, testimonies that they experienced, things that God was speaking through them, writing through them. All of it is God breathed and it all points to Jesus. And that is why I read it because it's also, because this is the truth, because this is God's wisdom on words. It's not only a way that he can communicate with me because he is not physically here right now. It's one way that he can communicate uh, with me through the power of the Holy Spirit who lives inside of me. But also it's like a roadmap for my life. If I want to live a life that glorifies the Lord, I want to understand what glorifies the Lord. And so it's a very much a roadmap for my life. It, gives, it offers me wisdom, it offers me discernment, it offers me direction, it offers me clarity, um, grace, love, joy, peace, all these things, this is what it offers me. Um, and it's a roadmap for my life. So that is why I read this. Um, and I also want to know about God, I want to know about Jesus. I want to know about his people. I want to grow my relationship with Jesus. And this is a way that I can read about him. Literally the four, the four gospels, the life of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, that, the, the, those four books describe the life of Jesus. And I can literally learn about my savior by reading this. So um, yeah, that's, that is um, a little bit of why I read this. So very passionate about that, very passionate about getting in my Bible every single day just because it is a roadmap for my life. And when it's offered to me for free, um, literally, because 
we live in a country where we can read it for free i'm going to take advantage of that because not everyone get, has that ability not everyone has that freedom so very very grateful for that but i want to kind of get into how i read the bible come say hi hey. i'm putting white tea on how do you read the why do you read the bible why do i read the bible i heard you say something in the other room it's pretty good well, you, it's the road map yeah honestly yeah you yep. heard a same answer why do you read the bible um, because I would say it's the way that God can speak to me now, um, as well as just, I mean, give me direction for my life, mm -hmm. um, and just comfort. Yeah. You know, a lot of times I'm just like, I don't know what's going on in my life or what I'm going to do or whatever it is. And, you know, yeah. it can bring you a sense of peace at times. Um, um the lighting wasn't good. Uh-huh. Here it comes. But also read it because we're called to read it we're, we're called to read it and there's a reason we're told to read it and it's all these other things we're saying mm -hmm. so and um, actually this is kind of funny because i was about to get into how i read the bible and how i read the bible changed when i met this man uh -oh. no in a good way um i was always very intimidated to read like psalms when i was fir first became a believer um and but psalms are like prayers or they're songs of praise uh it's almost like i think of a psalm as like a journal entry like what i do every single day that's how it that's pretty much what it is it right? is like so i brought my journal too because i'll be getting into that i journal every single day during my quiet time when i read the bible um but i think of a psalm as like a journal entry and so how i read the bible is i read one psalm a day and then I read something from the New Testament, like a chapter from the New Testament and whatever book I'm reading. And then right now I'm reading a chapter from the Old Testament every day as well. And whatever book I'm reading in the Old Testament. Um, but that changed when I met you because I was like, the Psalms were always confusing to me. But then when you really pointed it out, it's like, it's kind of more like a song of praise or a prayer of gratitude. And like, those are prayers that were prayed so long ago that you can use in your life today. Yeah. Um, which is so cool. Um, so yeah, how do you read the word? Honestly, it just... It like, what's your process? It depends and changes. Like, I would sometimes do that, where I'd read, like, a psalm, a proverb, something in the New Testament. Sometimes it would be something in the Old Testament, something in the New. Sometimes it's just something in the New Testament. Like, it's not always the same. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'll sit and read for 20 minutes, 30 minutes on just one book in the Bible. Other times it's I only read for two minutes and it's I just focused on one specific scripture or yeah. and a that's, couple of verses. Like it doesn't always have to be like that's sometimes what would get me to is like I felt like if I didn't carve out 30 minutes or 15 minutes or an hour or even 10 minutes and it's not like well what's the point? Yeah. But it's like even if you just have one minute or you just make a little bit of time and you just read something it's better than yeah. reading nothing. I think that's a really good point and something that we should definitely mention is that it's okay if you don't have an hour in your day to especially if you're like a parent you're probably not just going to have like a free hour in your day um, to just sit down and read the word and have no interruptions or anything like that like five minutes one maybe you literally read a verse and you're focusing on a verse for the day mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people confuse that and misunderstand that that oh they have a proper quiet time. I need 30 minutes to an hour a day. I need to read Old Testament, New Testament, Psalm. Sometimes I don't do that either. Sometimes I don't, like, I don't have time to do that, but just making sure or just wanting to, because if you are a follower of Christ, like, you do have the desire to get in your Bible every day. At least I have the desire to get in my Bible every day. Sometimes it's harder than others. Sometimes it's literally out of discipline, um, but I still do, and even reading one verse a day, that's my daily bread. That's like what can fuel me to get through the day yeah. um, and set the tone for my day really. So I think that's a good point. Um, you don't, it doesn't always have to look the same and how we read it is probably gonna be different than how someone else reads it. Like this mm -hmm. is just what we do in our routines and that's why I prefaced everything. Like I did not get a degree in seminary. I did not get a degree in theology. Um, this is not right or wrong. Uh, it's just kind of what works for me and it's how I spend time with the Lord every day. Yeah. So. Cause what you said, ultimately that's what it is. It's just a matter of that's spending time with God. Mm -hmm. So like whether it's 
spending time because you're reading for that long or spending time you only read one verse but that verse hit home and now you need to sit there and think about it and pray about it and mm -hmm. whatever it is for the next however long yeah. um, is more what it's about than anything. Yeah, no, for sure. And that's like something too. Um, the volume of what you read per day, like, oh, I read five chapters today. Like, I'm doing good as a Christian. That doesn't determine, like, the volume you read doesn't determine how close you are with God, I guess, or... There's plenty of times I've read multiple chapters or whatever it is, and then you could ask me, what did I read right after it? And I probably wouldn't be able to tell you a single thing I just read. Yeah. Because I just either wasn't in the right headspace or just kept reading and reading just to read, and I wasn't yeah. really... And so that's another thing too, like I was listening to a podcast not too long ago and JP Kaluda, he's a pastor from Texas, he literally said sometimes I read a verse a day because I want to read it how I'm going to teach it in the sense of that helps him in his quiet time thinking about that. Like if it's just a verse, that's okay, but I'm going to dissect it. I'm going to learn about it. I'm going to try to understand what God was saying in that verse. Mm -hmm. um, and I can get more from that than going and reading 10 chapters a day. Yeah. Um, which I just thought that was um, a good little nugget of wisdom. But yeah, that's kind of how I read the Bible every single day. That's an example of what Michael does every single day. But again, it can differ. I would encourage you, if this is your first time ever picking up a Bible and this is your first time ever reading the Bible, I would start with a gospel. So a book of... John. A, yeah. Start with John. That's what I was going to say. I would start with the book of John. Um which the gospel messages are, it's the life of Jesus. So um, it's telling about when Jesus was here on earth. And so I would definitely start with John. That's a really good one. Um, you could go, I like Matthew too as well. Like you could start Matthew, but once you're done with one, like read another one because it's from four different perspectives. So you can get something new from each gospel that you read too. And even if you Oh, have already read the Gospels like go back and reread the Gospels like it's the story of Jesus so um, yeah do you have anything to add to that um, I guess I'd also say I guess if you're new or even if you have been reading whatever it is don't get discouraged if you like let's say you have the mindset about what to read every day if you miss a day don't get discouraged yeah and don't be scared to then pick it up the following day yeah. I know I've some I've fallen into that before um, at a certain time in life where it's like, I miss a day, and then, oh, next thing I miss another day, and then I let it, like, compound, and I just, mm -hmm. you know, snowball. Um, the next thing you know, it's a week later, two weeks later, and I haven't picked it up. Yeah. Um, so, there's never a, never, never a bad time to pick it up, yeah. even if you haven't for a long time. Yeah. I will say I didn't become, you can scoot a little closer. Um, no, it sounds bad, I'm gonna stay right here. Okay, I didn't become consistent in reading my Bible until my junior year of college and I became a follower of Christ my sophomore year of college and I was always intimidated by it because I didn't know how to read it and then I finally did it. Um, and that consistency didn't start out with every single day, I will say, because mm -hmm. I would miss a day. And sometimes I would feel shameful about that. Like, oh, dang, I missed a day. And then I was like, no, it's fine. Like, there's other ways, too, that you can spend time with the Lord every day, too. If you miss reading the Bible, like, you can pray. You can listen to worship music in your car. You could have a really fruitful conversation with a friend or a mentor. Um, there's just so much you could go out in nature and just like experience god's beautiful creation like there's so much other so many other ways that you can spend time with the lord um but don't be discouraged if you miss a day that's a really good point yeah and ultimately it's just like it becomes or you would hope that it becomes it's something you want to do mm -hmm. so like you may not want to and you may not think anything of it if you don't read for a while but like the goal of the goal of what sometimes what will happen is if you're consistently in the word you'll get a desire to want to be in the word more mm -hmm. um and i will say too like even i think when starting to read it when i got really consistent it was after i went to passion which is a college ministry uh conference and i think i like started reading it honestly out of a little bit out of like conviction mm -hmm. in sense of i'm a follower of christ i believe all of this but i'm not reading the word of god and yeah. I don't know what's, I don't know the Bible. Like when people talk about it, I'm like, I don't even know where that is. And so it was a little bit out of conviction that it's like, okay, if also if these 
amazing like spiritual influencers in my life they all read the word and they're all like wise and their walk is inspiring with the lord i want that too and it was a little out of conviction that i started reading it and then just like michael said it became a desire to mm -hmm. get in the word every day yeah. i told them how uh second timothy 3 verse verses 16 was like one of the oh. first pieces of scripture that you wrote on the index card and you're like let's memorize this <laughs> is that the all scriptures breathed out by god yeah and profitable, profitable for, for teaching, teaching. Reproof. So it's training. Training. Reproof. And reproof. Oh, I'm kind of blanking. Maybe All we need to go back to those that. index cards. <laughs> a couple other things that I'm just going to add to this video. Um, something that really helps if you are wanting to start reading the Bible every single day is you need to evaluate, evaluate yourself and what part of the day like are you most likely going to get in the word so for me i'm very much a morning person and every single day it's in my routine i will get up he can attest to this i'll get up i make my breakfast i make my coffee and i immediately go to my bible like that's just my routine i love the morning i know if i waited till night like i rather read my book at night i probably won't read my bible at night unless like a you know off one off situation or something like that but and that's my routine for him. Uh, Lately, it's been more sporadic. Honestly. Yeah, I was going to say. Had, I was a, just thinking about it. I'm like, Ugh. we're in a, a unique lot, season of life, yeah, though. I've had a lot, pretty much free time all the time. Mm -hmm. So it hasn't really been much of a consistent, oh, yeah. this time I do it. I just kind of been picking random spots throughout yeah. the day, which isn't the greatest thing for me, but it my schedule allows it right now. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of just what's been happening. I will say though, I have some friends that are like big time night owls and they love like their quiet time to be at night before bed. So there are just people differ in that. Like if I'm a morning person, doesn't mean that you're going to get the most out of it of waking up at 5 a.m. and getting in your Bible. Like if that's not what you, you know, your prime spot is, then you probably don't want to do that. And that's going to make it miserable for you. Like, and it should, shouldn't be something that's miserable. Again, it's hopefully something that you develop a desire to do every single day so yeah. i think that's really important and then also because just like i said before i would highly recommend to get a study bible if this is your first time ever buying even a bible um you can dm me message me i recommend the quest study bible niv you also have you have a study bible right I have now a study bible what is that one max luke's cato yeah it's his it's like the, i think it's an nlt version of it but yeah it's, it's a bible. yeah it's max luke's cato nlt study bible michael has that one it's a brown leather back i think you like that one yeah that's a good one but also um there's commentaries out there uh michael has he recommended this to me when we first met it's called the blue letter bible app highly recommend that you can look up verse by verse and get commentary that um from people do who do have seminary degrees that will describe it um and make it a little bit more understandable enduring word is a commentary that i absolutely love um those would probably be my two go-to's i don't know if you have any Blue Letter Bible is about good commentary. So yeah. yeah, Blue Letter Bible's bomb. It has like a bunch of different references. Last but not least, podcasts. Like there are podcasts out there available now, like the Bible Recap or uh, what Bible in a Year or something like that, the Daily Bible App or something like that. There, there's podcasts on Spotify and Apple where it will literally read through a chapter in the Bible or read through a seg segment of the vi the Bible and then. Um, the person reading it will go over like an overview and what that all means and walk you through it. And so if you're going on a walk every single day, like start listening to podcasts or if you have a long commute to work, start listening to podcasts. Um, there's honestly so many ways that you can find a resource nowadays yeah. to get in the word. Uh, it's, it's awesome because it's so accessible to us now. Um, and then... I believe that is it. I don't know if I have anything else. Do you have like any last piece of encouragement for anyone who maybe, maybe you have been a follower of Christ for a long time and you just have, again, been intimidated by the Bible, haven't gotten into it. Um, or maybe this is your first time. I don't know. You have a piece of encouragement? I'll just say it's never too late yeah. to Good point. do it, whether you have been before or haven't or Mm -hmm. whatever your circumstances are um, yeah. you're not you know 
it's never too late yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say don't always, like, there's a lot of, you talk, there's a lot of resources out there, but don't substitute that for you personally spending time mm -hmm. with God either. Yeah. Like, you know, I love, I enjoy sometimes reading books about the Bible or about that, but don't substitute reading books about the book. Like, yeah. instead, just read the book that it's all about. Yeah. Um, this is what he's referencing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But. And also, to... I guess the one thing that I'd say is this has completely changed my life. Being, reading this every single day, and I won't say that lightly, it's... I think you could say the same thing. Like, it, this is completely, like, God has completely changed my life. Jesus has completely changed my life. And this is a way for him to communicate with me. And having this as a roadmap, I have, I feel like I have received revelation through this. I feel like I have received wisdom through this. Um, hope, so much hope um, through the Bible. And so that's why I want to encourage someone. Um, just get in it, you know. If, if you have any questions, there there are resources out there to find them. And then not only just read it, but then, like Michael said, spend time with God. Uh, be in His presence. Like, soak it all in. I go on prayer walks. I just go on normal walks where I'm not praying and I'm just walking. But sometimes I just, like, feel like... For me, when I walk, I feel like God speaks to me sometimes when I walk. Or I go on, I just pray on my walks. Or I'm in the car, I'm just listening to worship music and I can feel God's presence. Like, find what works for you. Find where you feel like God is speaking to you. And um, don't deny that. Like, the presence of the Lord is, um, it's incomparable. Well, it was nice to have Michael just kind of pop right in and show up. I really wanted him to do this video with me just because I feel like if you are a guy and you're wondering, like, do guys read the Bible? Yes, they do. <laughs> like, yes, they do. And I feel like sometimes it's nice to have, like, if you're a man, to have a man that is able to, like, speak on it from his behalf. And then, obviously, all the women that are watching this video, like, it's nice to have, a, like, a woman speak on your behalf and just, like, what they do. So, anyway, glad he could join. He got off an interview and came right to the couch. So, appreciate that. Uh, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, don't hesitate to comment. Uh, reach out on my Instagram. DM me or anything. Um, and then, don't forget to like and subscribe. We are... I don't know. It's just been fun. It's been fun to post every single week and it's just fun to make these videos. So we appreciate it if you like and subscribe and then we will be, we're trying to post one a week. So one a week is the goal for 2023. So hope you hop on the journey and we just hope that you have a great day today. Okay. Bye. Bye.